Hello there, my fellow gobos, and welcome back to another lore video from the universe of Warhammer Fantasy. Today we're gonna be covering a topic for which I already got multiple requests. It seems that even among the greenskins, these guys are a fan favorite. Thus, ladies and gentlemen, I give you the most fearsome and capable variants of the goblinoids known as the Hobgoblins. I am your host, the green-skinned narrator for today, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Hobgoblins are another of the many green-skinned breeds that infest the world. Physically, they are a bit taller than the average goblin, some of the tallest being almost as tall as a man. Yet still, they walk in a stooped posture, with a smaller nose, needle-like teeth, and a perpetual sneer. Their eyes are red, sly, and shifty, and almost all the hobgoblins have a bony hump on their back, emphasizing their slouch posture even more. It is said that this bony plate actually protects the back of a hobgoblin. To pretty much all those that face the hobgoblin in person, they are known famously for being irredeemably, remorselessly, and unbelievably conniving and treacherous beyond the level of any other creature. Despite being related to the orcs and the goblins, the hobgoblins are a separate breed entirely. They do not go to war alongside other goblins, nor do they join the wars of the orcs. And although they are known to have carried out a few opportunistic lootings together with their greener cousins, this is a very rare occurrence, mostly because other greenskins definitely detest the hobgoblins. Unlike orcs and regular goblins, hobgoblins have a more developed instinct for self-preservation, and they have no problem selling their services as mercenaries to anyone who can pay them. The attitude makes other greenskins believe that the hobgoblins are nothing more than cowards and traitors, even by the standards of greenskins. They especially hate them though for their relationship with the Chaos Dwarves, a long time ago, the corrupted dwarves arose in the east to fight and enslave the greenskin tribes of the Dark Lands, which at the time included the tribes of hobgoblins from the northernmost regions. According to the version of the story that the hobgoblins say, after a great deal of blood was shed by both factions, a compromise was reached with the corrupted dwarves. And now, when those march to war, they always have the hobgoblins in the vanguard. Another version of the story, though, tells a different reality. What really happened is that the Chaos Dwarves, fed up of the continuous disputes among their greenskin slaves, decided to create a new breed of orcs that were not so prone to fighting one another. These are the Black Orcs, which we already covered. Unfortunately for them, the Black Orcs proved to be too independent, rebellious, and the natural leaders of the other greenskins. During the height of the greatest and wildest of the Black Orc rebellions, with the Chaos Dwarves on the cusp of defeat, it was the Hobgoblins, having rebelled alongside the Black Orcs, switched sides and attacked the Orcs, disrupting the rebellion and preventing the annihilation of the Chaos Dwarves. In achieving that, the Hobgoblins earned the enmity of all the other goblinoid races who have deeply hated them ever since. After that conflict, the Hobgoblins have a place of prominence among the Chaos Dwarves, and unlike the other slaves, they are not made to work in the mines or the forges. Instead, they are employed as warriors, guardians and overseers of the other slaves. However, the Chaos Dwarves do not actually trust them. They know that the Hobgoblins need protection to survive, and they are far weaker than their own elite units, and so they use them as cannon fodder in battle. The Hobgoblins in their turn enjoy the favor of the Chaos Dwarves, and care very little about what other Greenskins may think about them. Despite their association though, not all the Hobgoblins are ruled by the Chaos Dwarves. Indeed, many Hobgoblins have their own realm beyond the Darklands, in the Far East. It is there that the domains of the legendary Hobgoblacan exist, ruling a great empire, with armies made up of thousands and thousands of wolf riders. The hobgoblins have learned many unusual abilities on the Great Steppe, 
Their exposure to the Cathayan Empire turned their warriors deadly in melee combat. The armies of Havgabla Khan are simply known as the Great Horde. When all the tribes under the Great Khan's rule are deployed in battle, the Horde is said to stretch from one end of the horizon to another. The chieftains of each tribe are called Khans, and each one has under his command a unit of warriors. Throughout the ages, many Habgabla Khans existed. Pretty much all of them either fell in battle or were murdered by their rivals. It is said that only the infamous Morkar Khan the Cunning managed to die of actual old age. The Hobgoblins respect only cunning and strength, turning to those they believe possess these qualities in abundance. Even so, they never stop looking for weaknesses in those around them and if they ever find any, they will go against them ruthlessly. Just like their other greenskinned cousins, the hobgoblins are also given to fighting each other, even at the best of times. They appear to have withstood the full effects of the mutagenic power that exposure to chaos can bring. Their shamans are rumored to be able to bind wind demons coming down from the north. Unlike other greenskins, the hobgoblins rarely fight for the lust of combat. They have a pragmatic nature which applies to all they do, and the Old World Empire has little interest to them except that it is a place to obtain some loot and maybe a bit of glory. However, in more recent years, a greater presence of these greenskins has begun to be noticed in the lands of Tylea and in the border kingdoms, offering their services as mercenaries. It was in the effort to stem the tides of the hobgoblins that the emperors of Cafe built the Great Bastion, a thousand mile long wall hundreds of feet high, protecting the northern borders of Cafe from the worst of the hobgoblin or chaos incursions. Unfortunately, the bastion itself is too large and too long for the Grand Empire to completely garrison, and so occasional ravening bands of hobgoblin raiders would sometimes break or scale the walls of the bastion and wreak havoc to the rice fields and villages lying just beyond. A couple of famous, or rather infamous, hobgoblins include Oglakan. Oglakan was one of the vassals of the Great Khan and enjoyed the favor of that greenskin despot for a long time. His tent was said to be as big as the whole of a human noble and he personally owned over a hundred wolves, making him a very wealthy hobgoblin indeed. In times of war, he could summon 600 warriors to battle. The fortunes of Ogla Khan would change though during the infamous battle of Zen Tu, when the hobgoblins clashed with the Cathayans of Emperor Pu Yi. When Hablo Khan, the commander of the hobgoblin army, was killed by the emperor's champion Tong Po, Many of the hobgoblins ran away, believing that all was lost. Ogla Khan, on the other hand, immediately switched sides and led his own lads into battle against his kinsmen. Everything was going well until the main horde of Hobgobla Khan arrived. They outnumbered the Cafeans and crushed them quickly. Ogla Khan and his tribe were declared outlaws and they were banished from all hobgoblin lands. With no other place to go, Ogla Khan and his lads headed to the west, to the Old World. Following the Silk Road, he arrived in the Darklands, and immediately enlisted in the army of the Black Orc warlord known as Gordug Smasher. Gordug was determined to raid the lands of Tylea, but at the Battle of the Long Knives he suffered a great defeat, as Ogla Khan again switched sides during the battle and turned on the Orcs. The Tylean general Giovanni Giuliani rewarded Ogla Khan generously and then hired the hobgoblins to act as scouts and skirmishers of his own. Ever since then, Ogla Khan has served as a mercenary under many generals and acquired quite a great reputation. Although only a few of his original 600 warriors are still alive, they are now battle-hardened veterans and much in demand. Hobgoblins overall are excellent archers and they are ferocious in hand-to-hand -hand combat, so there is only one thing that a general should consider when hiring them. Will they actually stay loyal? Gazak Khan Gazak is another successful mercenary general. 
His army includes many of the most infamous mercenary regiments in the world, like Manglar's mutant goblins, the Longknife Orc Warriors, and the dreaded War Trolls of the Grey Mountains. With these and many others, Gazak's warband has developed a reputation as an utterly merciless army, who will not shy away from slaughtering an entire city if they are paid to do so. Of his past in the steppes, Gazak speaks very little. Indeed, it is actually very difficult to understand the grunting language of the hobgoblins, and those that have dared to ask anything about his past were beheaded by Gazak himself. However, it is said that he is one of the most powerful of the war chiefs of the great Hobgobla Khan, and that he was sent by his leader to study the lands beyond. The claim is supported by the traders who have traveled to the steppes of the east and visited the ruler of the Hobgoblin nation in his tent, which is said to be the size of a small village. Perhaps Gazak is the first of the great horde to cross the mountains and one day the countless wolf riders of the Hobgobla Khan will cross the world's edge and sweep the nations of men before them. When in battle, Gazak rides Wargan, a gigantic wolf the likes of which has never been seen in the old world. In his hand he carries a huge scimitar, while on the head he wears a monstrous helmet. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Hobgoblins of Warhammer Fantasy for today. Definitely a lot more competent, for a lack of a more devious word, at least when compared to other goblins. There also seems to be a lot of parallels between them and the Mongol hordes of our history. Either way, I quite enjoy their aesthetic and the fact that they are decent warriors who don't have to rely perpetually on numbers. What about you though? What are your thoughts on the Hobgoblins of Warhammer? Do share any opinions or questions on the topic in the comments below if you want. If you enjoyed the video, please consider clicking the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thanks a lot for watching and have an awesome and healthy day. May Gork and Mork smash you on the head.